fucking now. Max has got his cup of, tea. cup of tea. Where's your jammy dodgers? Jammy dodgers. Jammy dodgers. Don't eat that shit. Bro. Don't you? No. I thought you liked your sweet stuff. Seven weeks tea, tea total. No chocolate brownies? No chocolate brownies, no nothing. Not even the homemade ones that homemade you're supposed to do? No sugar. Homemade flapjacks. Gluten-free oats, maple syrup, mighty butter. That's it. Three ingredients. Boom, that's my only snack. That's all I've had in seven weeks. This geezer's been promising me some of his recipes since, since what, 1993? So yeah, since I was born, innit? <laughs> yeah, man. Everyone wants the recipes, man. But yeah, hit, me, hit me up and I'll give her secret recipes. This geezer's capping. Anyway, October Red, I'm back in Birmingham, back home again with our English champion, Solomon Dakers. Solomon, I want to talk about you today. But also I don't because there's a lot going on this weekend. So I'm going to cut to the chase because I know you're a busy man. Yeah. Zhang Parker, I'm going to, just going to go straight in for it. Talk to us about that fight. Yeah, another dangerous fight for Parker. Zhang, you know, he's, he's got big punch power. You know, um, Southpaw has got, don't forget he's an Olympian, you know, from, when was it, 2012 and I think even 2008 maybe. Um, you know, so he's got good boxing, boxing ability. He's a big puncher, southpaw, that southpaw backhand. Okay. It comes from a funny angle and he, he fires it straight and fast and hard. So, you know, it's a real dangerous punch and, and Parker's... But you know, Parker, look, he's just been in with Wilder, arguably the most dangerous heavyweight, you know, for however, however long. And then he's into another dangerous one. And, you know, Parker's got great confidence, great momentum, you know, he's just active, busy. And, you know, if he sticks to the game plan, lock with Wilder, they had a game plan that stuck to the game plan and just got the win. He can do the same thing with Zhang. He nullified what Wilder, anything that Wilder had to offer, he was able to nullify it. I remember in all the press conferences, he was saying, oh, the advice he's had is to avoid that hand. Yeah. And every time Wilder threw it, he just shot under it yeah, and yeah, came yeah. back with some kind of counter, which is usually his overhand right. Beautiful boxing. Yeah, like you say, they got the game plan right. Andy Lee, you know, former world champion, very, uh, you know, intelligent, you know, fight strategy. And, um, you know, Parker's very experienced as well. So t t together, they, they, you know, put together a wick wicked game plan and, you know, they'll be doing the same thing with Zhang, you know. Yeah, it's still a hard fight, but, you know, um, all the best to, to Parker, you know, he's one of the good guys in boxing, isn't he? Yeah, I know you two get along well, shared some time in camps together. Zhang, though, something of a sort of a mysterious anom anomaly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was always there, but never there. Yeah, yeah. We saw that war with Hergovic. Everyone argues, you know, Hergovic was going through some tough times, hence his performance, but that was like a life and death. Then we saw him go in against Joel Joyce yeah. twice, yeah. able to literally capitalize on the juggernaut, Mr. Iron Chin, the one that no one gets out of there. And now Parker, who Joel Joyce, who, sorry, who Parker comfortably, well, got battered by Joel Joyce. Yeah, that that yeah, pyramid yeah. and yeah, stars yeah. make fights. It's, it's what it is. You know what it is with boxing? Like, you can't ever say one man beat him and then he's going to beat him because, you know, all different styles and, and every man on the day can, can get, the, get the win. So, you know, it's like back in, you know, the day in the 80s, everyone would fight each other. They'd have, you know, like the four kings back in the day, they'd all fight each other. Duran, Leonard, Hagler, Hearns, you know, the, the one might beat the other, one might beat the other. We just got to all fight each other, really. You know, you, you bring, everyone brings each other up by fighting each other and, you know, and bringing great, great boxing for the fans, really. So um, that's what you got to give credit for. What about the main card? I can't not speak about it. Obviously, Tyson Fury went in against Ngannou last time. I'm, I'm one of them. I held my hands up and said, sorry, I, I clearly underestimated Ngannou. Yeah. We've heard everything under the sun from Fury didn't train properly in camp. Fury underestimated him. Sort of like giving Fury credit saying he sort of beat him, even though it was probably not his best night. Yeah. You was in camp with him. Yeah, yeah. Did he train or not? I mean, Yeah, yeah, yeah no, he was training. Like, you know, I've been in a couple of camps and he's training, sparring, doing all the rounds, same, same, as he, same as he always did. I don't know if, you know, certain things, he could have maybe pushed himself a bit more here and there, but, but nothing that I've seen, you know what I mean? Um, you know, he was doing his, his, his same thing. You know, it's, it's awkward with these MMA guys because... They don't know what they're really doing in there, so like, and you don't, you can't really predict it. So, if you look what actually happened in the fight, when when Ngannou put Fury down, Fury actually went in with a jab and a one-two, commit, come over committed with a right hand, and Ngannou just threw really one, just just literally threw a hook over the top like that, just 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 for a counter, just an awkward hook and hit him on the top of the head. Um, 
And then other than that, if you watch the fight, there weren't much going on really. It weren't like Ngani was boxing with Fury and that. He was, you know, a bit of shifting and moving from Fury, a few, you know, peckers and pokes. And it, it weren't, weren't nothing spectacular. Ngani wasn't showing that he's a class boxer and that, you know. He had, he had a knockdown and he, he put a bit of pressure on. But um, I think uh, with this next fight, I think that Joshua just watch that and just, just be cautious at, at the start, box and move and, and, and not take his chances too early. Do you think us fans get caught up in the hype of like, oh, you know, oh, look at this. Look what Ngannou did to Fury now. Ngannou's the man that Anthony Joshua doesn't stand a chance. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Do you think, talk to us about the boxing fans. Yeah. You know us better than anything because you can only open X and see what everyone's saying. Us armchair fans, talk to us about that. From yeah, boxing fans, you know, like they say, boxing fans are fickle, you know. <laughs> Everything, someone comes on and gets one win, they're the best thing since sliced bread. You have one loss and, you you know, you should have ever bloody box in the first place <laughs> and you should have retired all this and that, you know. Um, so, you know, with the boxing fans, it's just like, let them speak, but let the fighters fight. And then you just, you have to see what happens on the day. Just appreciate that, you, that you're getting to see the, the fights and that they're, you know, putting their lives on the line and, and getting in there at the end of the day. You know, the fans say what they want. You know, Ungarn, he, he knocked down Fury once, but, you know, it doesn't mean he's, you know, the next fucking Joe Frazier or something, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, but we just have to see the fight, you know, it's entertainment. Just watch the fight and, um, you know, be entertained. What do you think about the training situation? I know you're someone that's been with uh, Max McCracken from the beginning. I'll always touch on trainers because it's something that... I don't know, call me old school. I get a bit, I always say I get jittery when I see people switching and swapping trainers. Anthony Joshua's done that uh, a couple of times now. And I mean, he's under Ben Davison. Ben Davison's got that track record. He's got some credible wins. He's had obviously Tyson Fury as a former world champion, Lee Wood. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people in his gym of credibility, including Jordan Gill that his the team has recently took on. Yeah. That relationship that you see and how do you know that a, a coach matches you as a fighter? What is it that you look at and think, you know what, yeah, this can work? Is it's, it like a relationship almost? Like? Yeah, because it's just something that over time, you know, you're not going to after the first week or two, you know, everything's gelling properly. But, you know, you've got to see how you get on with someone, you know, when you're doing long camps, you know, a couple of months down the line. If, if you've been training with someone a couple of months and, and every day you just think... I just don't like what I'm doing. I'm not, I'm not, it's not even that you're not enjoying it because, you know, training's got to be hard. But if you just don't feel like it's clicking or, you know, this, this don't feel right. I, don't, I just don't feel good. Day, every day is a sort of drag sort of thing okay. it, with the coach, you know what I mean? Then you know that, you know, you're maybe not in the right place. So you should have some sort of, you know, chemistry. You should have some sort of, you know, back and forth with a coach. You know, me personally, it's not like coach just tells you what to do and you do it. It's a back and forth. Max is telling me something. I might say, Max, I, I need to do this and that then he can adjust to me, I can adjust to him, you know, back and forth. You've got to work together at the end of the day because, you know, the fighter's the one that gets in the ring. So if, 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 if the fighter feels like something needs to be adjusted from the coach, you've got to speak it as well. You know, some fighters just think the coach is going to tell me everything. Whatever he says, if it works, he's the best coach. If it don't work, he's a shit coach. But it's not like that. You've got to work with the coach as well, you know what I mean? And, and you've got to use your own brain as well. And it's funny you should say that because I, sometimes I think a lot of people do rely on the coaches. Maybe a little bit too much when, like you said, you're the one that's going to be in there for three minutes on your own. You've got to think for yourself. Yeah, At exactly. Time, yeah, you got all the time, but well, yeah. well, most of the time you know, you got you have got to think for yourself. Um, you know, you can't just be waiting for the coach to tell you to you know throw a jab or you know do this or that. You've got to do it yourself, and the coach the coach should be, like I say, coaching you. He should be what you're doing. He should be adjusting what you're doing. If you throw something, he should be trying to improve what you're doing, not just control what you're doing all the time. Right, right. You know what I mean? And when you talk about that and the styles adjusting to you, your culture adjusting, because you, you've obviously got a style, obviously it's improving now as a professional, yeah. but Solomon Dakers has a style. Anthony Joshua has a style. Yeah. So I'll talk about that coach having to sort of amalgamate his style with yours and improve it rather than try and change it. Yeah, improve it because, you know, especially like, you know, the stage that these fighters are at, you know, like, Joshua has been boxing in the game for many years. He's not just, when you come into the game new, okay, you can try different styles, you know, you might, you're just learning out, so you're just being moulded. But when you've been moulded, you know, over the years, you know, you've got your base general, how, how you are, you've just got to improve, improve on things. So, you know, you can't have massive changes and everything, you know, if, if you're a, you know, a, a, a power puncher, a big power puncher, you're not going to just become a finesse, slick boxer, you know, just change like that after, you know, 10 years of boxing, you know what I mean? Um, so like I say, you've got to just, 
just keep improving on what your best attributes are and minimise your weaknesses. Talking about minimising weaknesses, we're, we're waiting for you to get out. I know I'm one of them that's been like, yo, what's happening? Uh, you know, Magnificent Seven, face on the pollster. I go on box rec, it's not on there anymore. In, in the words of us Bromi Jamaicans, wagwan. Wagwan for real, man. I t I'm in the gym, I'm ready, you know, March 16th was there. I went to the press conference. I'm being told everything, you know, uh, March 16th I'm fighting. And, uh, you know, stuff on the other side of the, of the water is um, not connecting with what we're doing. So it's looking like it's going to be pushed back a bit till April. I'm, I was ready to go next week. Um, yeah. Obviously, Birmingham, Birmingham show, you know, you know, I really wanted to get out in my, in my own town. But if I go to someone else's town, it's nothing that I'm, I'm new to. So, um, so be it, man. We're just going to keep getting ready. Do you know what the delay is? Because I know that obviously the... Met up this is all rumourville, issues with the board, waiting, etc., etc. But you've still been in the gym. You're still in the gym, you're still training, because someone could say, you know what, someone's dropped off that card, do you want to jump on there? That's how it can go in boxing, right? Yeah, that's, Stay that's ready. A, uh, staying ready and, um, you know, from my side we're ready, but from what I'm hearing, the other side's not ready um, yet. So, uh, you know, we just have to just, just... We're waiting on them, basically, we're waiting on them. Do you know what I mean? Um, but the fight needs to get made because, um, you know, I can't hang around my whole career on someone. But, you know, hopefully the fight's made, you know, just a few more weeks down the line. And um, that's, that's all I can say at the minute from what I know. David Adelaide, we need to find out what's going on. I have reached out to one of his friends to see if I can get him on the channel. To, obviously, there's, there's always two sides to a story. There may be stuff going on with him that we don't know. But we do know that Solomon Day, because he's ready, was expected to fight on March the 16th. So, yeah, if you're listening to this, someone send me a, a cheeky DM, an insult in the comment, whatever. Just let us know what's going on and when this young man's uh, going to get out next. What if they give you another opponent on the 16th? Could you jump on that? Um, we were trying to look at options. It's, it's very unlikely. It's unlikely with the position with, you know, my English title, right. um, you know, with the board approving Adelaide. Right. And, um, you know, me hopefully looking for the British title next, you know, um, another route might jeopardise that option. So, you know, we want to stay on the route where we're going to try, hopefully, get the British title shot next, um, you know, with a winner of Wardley Clark. So, you know, we're trying to stay on, on this, this pathway at the minute. All right, then. Nice one. Listen, Solomon, it's always a pleasure. Give your fans one thing that they don't know about you that you're, you're happy to share on camera because there may be things that he doesn't want to share on camera. Who knows? Little secrets. One thing about you that you're prepared to share on camera, like a, a hobby, something that we don't know about you. We know about brownies, homemade recipes. What else is there to Mr. Dakers? I'm not willing to share any, divulge any further information. <laughs> no comment and the ducks. <laughs> no, comment. no comment. Listen, it's been a pleasure as always. And I'll no doubt I'll speak to you soon. Yep. As always, thank you very much for coming down. People say I'm toxic and honestly, I don't care.